two, one. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Monday. This is another episode in our series of public affairs show, Our Community Cares. And actually with this show, we will have completed two full weeks of programming. So uh, we've been with you for two weeks, focused on the impact of this coronavirus on our community and bringing you some experts and resources that can help all of us cope uh, with this brave new world. Uh, so uh, we have covered everything from job search to our primary healthcare workers, the impact on them, the loss of jobs in the hospitality industry, uh, law enforcement issues, uh, and uh, more. So we're really delighted to start off this week with something that is universal to all of us, which is our mental, our emotional health. And we are very delighted to have a special guest with us. Uh, this is our vice president of and chief of behavioral health from Community Health Incorporated South Dade, CHI, uh, Jean-Pierre. And in just a few minutes, he'll be giving us some coping strategies. So we're very much looking forward to that. Uh, and I did want to say that we will have two other great shows this week, Wednesday and Friday, because we come to you live every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 4 p.m. Uh, this week on Wednesday, we'll have Jeff Hearn, the Director of Litigation at Legal Services of Greater Miami, my former employer. And he will be speaking about landlord-tenant issues. And I know many, many people are concerned about that uh, with loss of income that they'll not be able to afford their rent. Uh, so he'll be speaking with us on April 1st, which is, of course, the start of the new month and rents are due. And then on Friday, we'll have another representative uh, from uh, Legal Services to talk with us about uh, unemployment compensation issues, another really critical uh, issue to take care of our basic needs. So uh, with that, we are going to turn today to the challenges of our mental and emotional health. And uh, we love CHI, Community Health, South Dade. They do a fabulous job, a range of health and mental health services, including they're doing testing for the coronavirus. So uh, we'll touch base about that as well. Um, I'm a social worker as long before I was an elected official as well as an attorney. Yes, thank you, Rodrigo. See the thumbs up uh, with the National Association of Social Workers. And so I've been always focused on this issue of community well-being. Uh, but here we are in this strange new world. And uh, so the challenges are, are even greater for all of us. And just as we're going through this crisis, we are told to socially isolate hate that term socially isolate because we don't want to be socially isolated we just want to be physically isolated and just when we want to give each other hugs and and be reassuring and be together and it's it's really really painful so um we'd like to hear from you finally uh mr pierre jean uh about what can we do how can we have compassionate interactions simple everyday kindness in the midst of this darkness so please, first of all, if you could just tell us a little bit about CHI. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for hosting me. Um, what a pleasure to be on a group with a, uh, <clears throat> this afternoon. So I am currently the Vice President and Chief Behavioral Health Officer. As you may know, uh, CHI is a federally qualified health center. We also are designated as a community mental health center as well. We annually serve about 83,000 patients a year and we provide your full spectrum of behavioral health and primary care services. We have 11 locations and 35 uh, school-based sites. Fantastic, fantastic. What about those school-based sites? What's happening at those schools now that they're shut down with your school-based counselors? Our social workers, I actually met with our school-based social workers this morning. Um, they have been, um, ready to go. They got some rest last week. Um, they have their electronic equipment and they will be spending the first couple of days this week actually checking in with school personnel and then checking in with the clients that they, or the students they've served throughout the year. Um, so our team of 10 uh, will be working um, utilizing um, telephonic services along with telehealth services to connect with our students who may be suffering some additional stress during this crisis. So that's excellent response uh, that you're, they're busy not only serving the needs of the children, but also of the teaching personnel, how stressful it is for, for everyone and certainly for our teachers. And I know they're keeping like through this, they're using Zoom and they're keeping track of the whole classroom, uh, something 
something very different. So I was going to ask you, how is CHI adapting its operations? So that's one way. Can you tell us other things that have changed at CHI in this pandemic? Well, we've definitely, of course, enhanced the cleaning of our high touch areas. Um, we have now um, scaled down on our testing services. We were the first drive through center in Miami-Dade, but now that there's other testing centers in the county, we will continue to do testing, but we are now providing testing Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. We are uh, moving steadfast to implement our telehealth uh, services uh, via video conference. Uh, last week, we started those services on a small uh, scale. Uh, and we have been providing telephonic services um, for about the last two weeks once we got notification that that was an allowable services allowable service through our managing entity and through our insurance carriers that we provide services Excellent. for. Excellent. Thank you. Let me just stop a second and make sure that our listeners know they can post their questions and comments in the chat function, which is on the upper right hand side of the screen. Just touch it up there and a chat box will come down. We're not able to open up the mics. So if you could, whoops, what happened? I went away. Uh, hello, is that you, Andrea? Thank you. So uh, if you would, wouldn't mind any questions or comments, just put them in chat and we will definitely get to you. Um, okay, so if you could tell us a little bit more about the range of mental and behavioral health services that are available through CHI. Okay, so we do provide the full spectrum of behavioral health services. We do have, uh, medication services to include medication management, psychiatric eval. We have psycho, um, psychotherapy, individual group and family. As you can imagine, we're only doing individual services in some family at this point. Uh, group services have been suspended due to the social distance uh, guidance provided by the CDC. You're meeting, but you're not meeting in person with groups, but you might still meet in person with individuals and families? Absolutely. We are still open. Uh, we do want to utilize the telehealth platform as our number one option, but we are open for business for individuals that actually absolutely have to come in or they do want to uh, have that face-to-face -face encounter. As far as, as far as services are concerned, um, we are, our case managers are still boots on the ground assisting our clients that may need uh, a variety of different resources in the community, rental assistance, utilities assistance. Uh, we find ourselves in a situation where there is going to be an additional strain on our clients that we serve, especially those that are receiving social security benefits. So we are working with those clients to um, call FPNL, ask for extensions, payment deferments. Mm -hmm. So our case managers are um, readily available in assisting those clients at that point. Our crisis stabilization unit is still open. Uh, along with our two bed detox unit. So we're fully operational. Um, the most systematic change that we've made is to work with and try to move towards the telehealth platform. Okay, great. And uh, are you taking new patients or only existing patients? We are taking new and existing patients. Okay, great. And so uh, do they need to come in in person to do intake or could you do it over the phone? We're actually, uh, our preference was to do the intake uh, rather telehealth, uh, and patients can actually call on appointment hotline, and I want to give you that number um, oh, that maybe we can post on your site, yes. and that number is 305-252-4820. I'm going to repeat that number. Um, it's 305-252-4820. All right, that's great. And um, uh, so you have a shortage, we have a shortage in the community of personal protective equipment or the kinds of gear that people are using to protect themselves, the masks and sleeves, they call it, things like that. How are your workers protecting themselves? Well, I'm happy to report that we have sufficient PPE materials for those frontline staff at this moment, but we are working hard to get more. These materials need to be regularly changed and we need to be able to expand the supply to even more staff. So our, so our logistics team is working very diligently to procure additional equipment. Okay, and in terms of your staff, do you have adequate staff for the need? Um, we do in this have, yes, we do have um, adequate staff. As with any organization, anybody that's sparing any type of sickness, we are asking them to stay home. 
We've now limited our building into one entrance for staff. And of course, the patient entrance, everyone is being screened prior to entering the building. Those are, so those are some of the safety mechanisms we've implied uh, during this uh, COVID-19 crisis. Do you have some staff that are on self-isolation or, um, you know, like, like so many in our community are? Do you have some... Um, What's it, absenteeism due to the crisis, I guess I would ask? Um, I wouldn't necessarily say due, um, due to COVID-19, but we do have uh, family uh, team members that have sick family members at home. Some staff members have um, childcare issues. So we are working and utilizing this time to really provide compassion to our staff as though they are our greatest asset and working with all individuals on an individual basis to uh, do the best we can to accommodate their personal situation. Okay. And are you seeing an uptick? Has there been increased demand for services since this crisis started? Unfortunately, we've actually seen a decrease as far as our productivity mm. is concerned. As individuals are adhering to this safer home and staying home. Um, so we have seen a decrease and not an increase as far as services are concerned. Do you think that means that people are doing okay? Um, wouldn't want to make that assumption, but we do know we are working diligently to check in with all of our patients uh, to make sure that they're, you know, they have their medications, okay. taking care of themselves, and that's what really uh, so matters to us. For them, you're you're reaching out. That's it, it, exactly. So, for instance, if anybody had a medication assistant program, our psychiatrists are actually calling them and saying, you know, Judy, you missed your appointment this morning. How's everything? Do you need a medication refill? So we're being proactive in that effort to ensure we're calling individuals that are not, uh, that have no shows. Excellent. So maybe you could tell us a little bit for the general public, maybe people who are not yet patients or who haven't uh, reached out to you, what would you say is the most important advice you could give to people who might be struggling now with anxiety or depression? Great question. And I actually just want to focus on five areas. Just want to remind the audience that we really need to focus on what we can control. A lot of these um, things that are going on now is beyond our control. Uh, so we want to really focus on the things that we can control, staying home, um, providing care for yourself, okay? We have to take care of ourselves during this crisis. We want to also identify those challenge distorted thoughts, okay? We want to keep on a positive, a positive um, frame of mind. We want to keep things positive. Uh, we want to practice mindfulness. And the most important one I really wanted to discuss is we really need to utilize uh, appropriate breathing, okay? There's different mm -hmm. breathing techniques that can be utilized. And also, you want to take a time out, okay? Um, if things are getting too hectic, you want to um, sometimes just take a step back, okay? And I have no personally, I've had to take a step back from uh, some of the news and just say, you know what, I'm going to only check in because it can uh, become somewhat, somewhat addicting. So, I, you know, if there's a situation that is overwhelming, you need to kind of just take a step back from it. All right. So breathe. Can you give an example? Can you tell us how to breathe right to take a little space, little time? There's actually different breathing methods, but I would encourage, there's a number of um, online platforms that uh, individuals are offering fitness classes, yoga classes, uh, free of choice. I mean, free of charge online, uh, but definitely relaxation breathing would be the technique that I would uh, definitely suggest. And that's just closing your eyes, relaxing, and take a couple deep breaths in and a couple deep breaths out. Look at that, what a demonstration. All right, I feel better already. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. No, I, I know whenever I do it, I do feel better and I don't take the time that I should uh, to, make, to make that happen. Um, so what do you see as the, the virus uh, unfolds? You know, now we're told uh, the Governor DeSantis has us on uh, stay, what is it, safer at home in South Florida through mid-May. So we're talking another, we're, we're talking a good amount of time here that we're going to have to really get, get comfortable with this new normal. So what do you anticipate uh, for you at CHI and behavioral health will, will happen as a result of this? 
As I mentioned earlier, um, I do anticipate us utilizing different platforms to provide the service, such as telephonic and uh, telehealth services. Uh, these um, subject matter experts, they're the experts. We need to adhere to the guidance that we're, they're providing. I actually saw a news article earlier this morning and it talked about the city of San Francisco who was one of the first uh, metropolitan cities to actually put the safer home in place and they can uh, look back at some of their data and their hospitals are not overwhelmed and they have not mm. seen that apex of cases uh, in their city. Uh, so we really need to adhere to those experts and our public officials at this time. It's critical. All right. All right. So uh, you, you went through it at the beginning. And if you could, we have time, go through it again. The five things that we can control. Okay. So let's start off. Once again, we need to focus on what we can control. Okay. We can't control that the movies are closed, gyms are closed, our beauticians are, con are closed. We can't control uh, that we can't see some of our family members. Okay. We have to utilize social platforms such as Zoom. Skype, Facebook, uh, to have those interactions. We need to identify and challenge distorted thoughts, okay? We have to keep it on the positive that we're going to be around. This shall pass, okay? So we want to definitely encourage individuals to keep a positive uh, frame of mind. Practice mindfulness, okay? Learn to breathe. And last but not least, during this crisis, we want to ensure that individuals are taking care of themselves, okay? Personal, you know? If you can get some exercise, if you can utilize uh, yoga, okay? If you can see your medical professionals via telehealth, um, that is what we need to <clears throat> promote to decrease some of the anxiety. And there's an important um, resource that I didn't want to provide. Uh, we actually have a crisis counselor here 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And I do want to provide that number uh, to the community. And if somebody is feeling overwhelmed and they really just want someone to talk to, or they may be seeking a resource, where, where is there a food pantry? Um, do you know if I can get a deferment on my car note? Um, do you know uh, how do I deal with a potential eviction, even though we know evictions have been suspended at this point? Uh, but it is a very important resource for the community if somebody wants to just speak to someone. And as I had mentioned before, this service is offered 24 day, 24 seven. And that number is 305-252-4865. And that is directly to our crisis stabilization unit. And the audience can just ask to speak to uh, the crisis screener. Excellent. Well, that is really great uh, to know, great resource. And, you know, I just uh, wrote a little article on this issue as well, which appears in the community newspapers and we'll be posting the link. And, um, you know, I do urge people to reach out to talk to somebody. We all have hopefully somebody in our lives that will listen to us and though we're physically separated, doesn't mean we have to be emotionally separated, right? So this is a good time. I saw a great list. What can you do when you're at home? You can reach out and call somebody. You can like you said, get some exercise, some fresh air. You could, um, you know, start a new uh, hobby. <laughs> I mean, there's many, many things. If you look at it as an opportunity to uh, to recenter and regroup, there's lots of things. Uh, I know I've been cooking up a storm, and I am not much of a cook, so I find that relaxing and therapeutic. And then, of course, I'm eating healthier uh, because I've I've done it. So. Um, but, it, it, but at the end of the day, when your thoughts are heavy and you're having anxiety and difficulty sleeping or whatever it may be, there are professionals uh, to turn to in our community. So great to know about your, your services and that you're open. Uh, and for now, it even can be seen in person if, if need be. And most importantly, that crisis counselor is uh, free of charge. Uh, it's, a, it's a service that we've uh, been providing for many great. years. We receive um, state funding um, through South Florida Behavioral Health Network, Thriving Minds. Um, so, and we do encourage individuals to call that hotline if they just do want to speak to someone. Yeah, and I want to emphasize that there's licensed professional clinical um, professionals, and not everybody has that level of expertise. And so, we want to really encourage people that if they really feel the need for crisis counseling, that they try to find 
uh, a facility such as yours that really has that expertise. Could you give us the range of the kinds of people, professional degrees that are, are with your team? Well, um, like myself, like yourself, I'm a licensed clinical social worker, so we definitely have social workers. We have marriage and family therapists. We have licensed mental health counselors. We have psychiatrists. Um, we have um, case managers. We have substance abuse specialists. Uh, nurses play a vital role in our service delivery. Um, so we do have the full spectrum uh, of behavioral health um, providers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, we do have some chats, so we're going to go ahead and, oh, the chat is, uh, we've been capturing the, the critical information you've provided us, the hotline, the, the five tips, uh, your crisis counselor, excellent. So I'd like to uh, turn to the caregivers. So we have to take care of the public, but we also have to take care of the people that give the care. And that is something right now that we are all very mindful of because we know people are really putting themselves uh, right in danger's way uh, for our benefit, our, our first responders, our healthcare professionals, our police and our fire. What do you have to recommend for, for those people that are taking those risks every day? Anything special for them? Not anything special, but first and foremost, you have to care uh, for yourself. Uh, mm -hmm. Since we started the COVID-19, we have tested a number of first responders uh, because it's, they have to be safe in order to uh, provide uh, those services to the community. So uh, we have been working in collaboration with multiple law enforcement agencies uh, to provide the testing and other healthcare uh, workers to ensure that they're safe and they know their status. Uh, prior to providing care to others. So once again, caring for yourself, okay? Um, being aware of what those symptoms are. Um, there's actually a couple of apps out there, apps out now that you can actually do a COVID-19 um, test and you answer a couple of questions and it identifies you as low, medium, or high risk. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's a valuable tool that I encourage individuals to use. Very good, very good. And I think we uh, just want to be really kind to each other. Absolutely. I think practicing kindness, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I come up with the basics. Be safe, because that's the fundamental. Take all the precautions. You're safer at home. Stay home. Don't go out shopping unless it's absolutely necessary. And if you do take all the precautions, um, don't visit with, with people that are not your immediate family and even in the immediate family group it's a cluster so you want to take all the precautions you can um but say be safe be strong absolutely and You're keep safe. it positive we also want to encourage keep individuals it positive. keep it positive we do see uh, a lot of negativity um throughout the news and some very you know disheartening stories uh, right. but there are a number of successful cases where individuals are being treated and discharged home uh, yes so well, many more people who contract it are cured than uh, not. I mean, it's the, the odds are with you, even if you do get sick. Mm -hmm. So I think that's an important point. And as well. we can see from the daily news debriefings, you know, there's a number of technologies and advancements that are being, you know, scientists, experts are working around the clock. So um, that's something that's positive that we need to look um, forward Great. to daily is the new advancements that are coming out. All right, now a question was raised here in the chat about recovery, addiction recovery meetings. Since a lot of those are in person, um, they've been canceled, what do you recommend for people that are coping with addiction? I do um, suggest they reach out to the local AA division and see what platform they're utilizing. We are still providing um, the substance abuse services, but if somebody's in the uh, recovery stage, we do um, suggest they reach out to whoever uh, their sponsor is and to the local AA community. Okay, so are some of those meetings taking place uh, virtually? We, you know? Yeah, we do not have any meetings at this point, uh, any mm -hmm. AA meetings at this Group. point. Yes. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, well, we're coming to the end of our half hour, and uh, you've been very calming. Your manner is very calming. I can see that you yourself would be a wonderful resource for people uh, in, in this storm. Uh, and so let's just, if, you, if we could wrap it up with your final advice to everybody, uh, and then I'll highlight what's coming this week. So please. 
Okay, so remember, I want everyone to understand that they can focus on what you can control. Um, practice those breathing techniques and utilize those platforms online, um, yoga, exercise, uh, and most importantly, uh, care for yourself. Um, we want to remind everyone that CHI is a medical home of 83,000 patients and counting. We will continue to provide our services, some via telehealth. We believe in our mission to serve as first responders and will always be the place where anyone, regardless of income or insurance status, can have access to high quality health care. And thank you for having me. Thank you so much. It's really, uh, CHI is a tremendous community asset. You're providing comprehensive services from children and dental care to um, Delivery, delivery, and now we've learned a lot about your mental health services. So we're really grateful uh, to you for your wonderful work. And as a reminder, you are the only South Day drive-through website. Uh, right. Now reduced hours, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, just the mornings. Is that correct? Correct. Those services will be offered on Monday, uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And those hours are typically from about 9 to 12. And how does one access an appointment? Okay, so we do have an appointment hotline. Um, it is on a first come, first service. We do encourage individuals uh, to call prior to coming. And I believe I shared that appointment hotline with you where you can, uh, I can't divulge all the testing criteria. I can tell you to get tested, you must have recently traveled to any of the high risk countries or have been in contact with someone who, have co who has COVID-19. In addition, you must be experiencing, experiencing the following symptoms, fever, cough, or shortness of breath. Okay, very good. Um, let me just uh, make a correction on the record here. I've been notified, I mentioned May 15th as a date, which is very dire. Apparently the governor meant to say that the safer at home order would apply through April 15th. So uh, let's, let's stay calm. I know the president said he thought that the peak uh, of hospitalizations would occur uh, within the next couple of weeks. That was just a hope. And we know the more we do, the better the outcome will be. So we can't just sit here waiting for this unfold. We have to take our personal responsibility, but we have to know what we can control and not. And we thank you for giving us some, some good guidance about that. Um, and uh, so, Mr. Pierre, this was our mental health day. Thank you so much. On Wednesday, we're going to be learning about landlord-tenant issues, evictions. Like you said, we have a moratorium on evictions in Miami-Dade County, but that doesn't mean your landlord's not going to want to get paid. So we're going to talk about what are the re what's the recourse that uh, people can have if they don't have the money to, to pay their rent uh, and so on. And then on Friday, we're going to be looking at the unemployment compensation system and how to apply. Right now, there's a huge backlog. People cannot get through on the lines. We know the benefits are being expanded by the Federal uh, Relief Act, but we, we don't know how people are going to be able to quickly access those services, and we're gonna talk all about it to make sure people can. So thank you once again to CHI. Thank you, Jean-Pierre, and thank you to our friends. Oh wait, we have a message for you from your friend Susan Manquita. She says, hi, Jean and Daniela, thanks for doing this. All right. Hello, Susan. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So thanks to all of our listeners. Please spread the word. This will be archived. It will uh, go to our Facebook platform, and we want to encourage people to access it from there. And please pass the word about our future shows. So be safe, be strong, be kind. Good night. <laughs>